what is meant by a substance's specific latent heat of vaporization, and can we describe a simple experiment to measure the specific latent heat of vaporization of water? So we've already met latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of fusion, which is telling us the amount of energy absorbed or released during a change of phase. So let's take a look at the definition for specific latent heat, in this case of vaporization. So we can say that specific latent heat of vaporization is the amount of energy, the amount of energy per kilogram and that's the that's what the specific part is actually telling us it's telling us per kilogram so it's telling us the amount of energy per kilogram absorbed or released during the phase change from liquid to gas or vice versa, the other way, from a gas to a liquid, in which case we would, we would release energy as we were forming bonds, making bonds. The equation for specific latent heat is L is equal to the energy that's absorbed or released per kilogram, so over M. So L is the symbol for specific latent heat of vaporization. So that's the specific latent heat of vaporization. I'll just put of VAP. Hopefully you see what I mean there, abbreviating. And E is the energy that's absorbed or released, and M is the mass of liquid that we've changed into a gas, or the mass of gas that we've changed into a liquid. And we could even put a little V there to show that it's vaporization rather than fusion. Okay, we can just rearrange this equation uh, to be in the form of energy that's absorbed or released by changing state is equal to m times l v in this case and that's quite a useful equation to have up your sleeve for calculations and questions so second part of this flashcard we need to be able to describe a simple experiment to measure the specific latent heat of vaporization of water so this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to put a going to put a kettle onto a, a weighing balance, onto a, some scales, digital scales, now that kettle will be wired up so that we can measure the current flow of electricity into the kettle so we can have a an ammeter there and we'll also want to measure the voltage the potential difference across the heating element in that kettle it's basically a resistor so we'd put a voltmeter in parallel with the with the kettle and here's our voltage source which will probably be the mains voltage which is alternating current at about 230 volts so hope you can sort of see that small diagram uh, but that's the idea so let's go through the steps for this experiment so number one we need to heat a volume of water a volume of water to its boiling point 
By the way, it's always a good idea to draw yourself a diagram if you are asked to describe an experiment. Um, label it up um, to show what the parts are and uh, then go ahead and describe each step. So heat a volume of water to its boiling point. We've got to get the water up to its boiling point first of all because that's going to be the temperature at which if we put any more energy in we'll start breaking bonds and transferring to steam to a gas. Okay number two measure the so measure the mass of kettle plus water and we're going to call that M1. So that's our first mass measurement. Number three, boil the water. So turn on the electrical circuit or turn the kettle on, boil the water for at about three minutes is probably a good time. Three minutes, assuming you're using about maybe half a liter of water. So our time T is going to be 180 seconds. So you'll need a stop clock or a watch or a clock on the wall to, uh, to time that. And during that time, we need to and record the potential difference, the voltage and current. Voltage will be in volts, current will be in amps. Okay, number four, once it's been boiling for three minutes, we'd turn it off and we would measure the final mass of kettle plus water. So that would be M2 and calculate Calculate the mass turned to gas, turned to gas. And the way we would do that is to say it is simply M1 minus M2. That's the, the mass turned to gas because the mass of the kettle will cancel out and we'll just have the mass of water that we've lost as gas. And that's pretty much all you need to explain about this uh, experiment. If you want to go into more detail or if you're asked about the equations, we could say that the energy transferred, energy transferred by the kettle and the electric circuit, we'll call it E, can be found by multiplying voltage times current times time, EVIT. And once you've found the energy transferred, we can then use this equation to calculate the specific latent heat of vaporization for water. So we would then go LV is equal to E over M, the mass of water that we've, that we've uh, turned into a gas. We know what the energy transferred is in joules, so that was voltage times current times time divided by m1 minus m2 and that would be the equation we would use oops, to calculate the specific latent heat of vaporization for water. Now you should get a value which is about 2265 kilojoules per kilogram. Now Note that these are kilojoules. The value that you get out will be in joules. So you'll need to divide by a thousand to get it into kilojoules because there are a thousand joules in each kilojoule. So that's 2,265,000 joules needed to convert each kilogram of water in, from a liquid into a gas. That's quite a lot of energy needed to break all of those liquid bonds in one kilogram.